Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're talking about TDEE. -E, what it is, how to calculate it, and all the problems surrounding the calculations that you should be aware of when using this number. But if you have not subscribed to this channel already, make sure you take a moment to hit that subscribe button with that little bell notification so you don't miss out on more nutrition, mobility, and workouts like this. Ready? Let's dive into this info. So today we're going to be talking about TDEE, -E, what it is, how to calculate it, and why it matters to you, the problems surrounding your calculations as well. So TDEE, -E, I've made this video today because I've seen a lot of conversation around total daily energy expenditure recently. And it comes down to basically the amount of calories that your body is burning in a day overall. Our TDEE is made up of four components. BMR, NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Our TEF, thermogenic effect of food or thermogenic effect of feeding. And EAT, which is our exercise activity thermogenesis. Now generally when you see people calculating their TDEE, -E, they're usually using an online calculator or some form of app to help generate that by plugging in some variable numbers. The second way you see people calculate it is by tracking their calories over a period of weight maintenance. So it might be a week or two where they're maintaining their weight within a pound or two um, up or down, plus or minus, and then taking the average of the caloric intake, which is probably the better of the two options because it is more tailored to your body and you do get a better idea of what your total energy expenditure is based off of the intake that you've been taking in and maintaining your weight. So you're tracking both your weight and you're tracking your calories in at that point in time. But today, I'm gonna to be talking about mainly the problems surrounding these ways of calculation. And it usually goes down to the root problem of calorie counting in general is not an accurate measure to be using. I hate to say it. So if you are a calorie counter and you've lost weight, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that calorie counting can't work for you. I'm just saying that there is air within calorie counting that we should be aware of and it usually gets to people eventually when they're near reaching their goal and they get a little bit anxious and they can't lose those last 10 pounds because of their calorie counting anymore it's just failed on them today we're going to be talking about why those things are failing you so let's start by talking about the air on the expenditure side of things with BMR specifically. Now BMR is our basal metabolic rate. This is essentially the calories we would burn if we were laying in bed all day and doing nothing else, not even eating food because that doesn't take into account our digestion. It is simply the calories our body burns to maintain our vital functions. Now BMR can vary from person to person and it can vary within a person from day to day. A simple variation in the FTO gene can actually cause us to burn 160 fewer calories a day we've found. We've also found differences in epigenetics. So mothers that eat a certain type of nutrient during their pregnancy and then give birth those offspring have been shown to burn about 5% more calories per day and we've found this to be likely and similar in human form as well. So we're not just looking at mice and that also. There's some variation in epigenetics. Brown fat. People that live in cold environments actually have more mitochondria. Therefore, they burn up to 400 more calories per day simply because of that mitochondria density in their body compared to people who don't have that. All right, this next one's a big one. Sleep. People who have had sleep deprivation for one single night have been found to burn 5 to 20% 
fewer calories. And last but not least on this list for BMR, hormones. Specifically in women, we're looking at their menstrual cycle. The luteal period tends to burn more calories than the follicular period, actually. So that is something that should be taken into account as well. And those are all things surrounding our BMR specifically. The next one we're going to look at is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Those are the calories we burn when we are simply moving throughout the day. It's not planned activity, it's any physical activity in general. So going upstairs, walking to and from the car, going around the house and doing laundry, going out and doing gardening, all those things would fall under the non-activity, non-exercise activity thermogenesis category. Thank you. The error in that usually occurs when we're looking at people who have been overweight or obese previously and have lost weight. The mechanism that we're looking at is called adaptive thermogenesis. So generally what happens when we lose a significant amount of weight is that our body now downregulates the amount of calories that we need to actually function and work through a regular day. So what it does is basically cause me to move less and require fewer calories. It makes my muscles actually more efficient so that I burn fewer calories also, making sure that I'm not in a starvation state and my body's conserving itself. So a person that eats 2,600 calories a day or it's estimated that they should eat that much because they lost weight might actually only need about 2,300 calories per day. Next, TEF, thermic effect of food or thermic effect of feeding. Basically, what I eat and how much of that that I eat can cause me to burn more or less calories. So basically, if I were eating a diet that's higher in protein, that's going to require me to actually burn and use more of the calories that I'm taking in because my digestive system needs to break down that protein than if I were eating a diet that was simple carbohydrates. That's going to break down a lot easier. It takes fewer calories for my body to actually break it down. Therefore, I need fewer calories and I'm taking in more calories overall. And finally, the last one under our TDEE category is EAT, exercise activity thermogenesis. So this is my planned exercise that I do on a schedule. This is actually the least amount of calories burned out of all the calories we've talked about, believe it or not. It will only account for about 10 to 15% of our calories burned on our TDEE. The error in this, depending on the method that we're using, there is up to a 45% error in the calculation of calories burned. That's pretty significant. All right, so that should just about cover the energy expenditure side of the calculation that you're getting for TDEE on calories out. Now, let's take a look at calories in in case you're doing the tracking method. Starting with calorie counts are imprecise, problem number one. So basically that apple that you're eating, whether it's a large one, a medium one, or a small one can vary quite differently on the number of calories that you're taking in to begin with. So if you're eating natural foods like that, but also on food packages, the FDA permits up to 20% error in caloric calculation. And usually when we're looking at those calculations on the back of a food package anyhow, it was something that was put in a bomb calorimeter and measured through that to give you a number, but things differ with inside our body. Which brings me to my next error. We don't absorb all the calories that we consume. Our bodies are actually often unable to truly digest and absorb all the nutrients within the food content that we take in. Therefore, we do not get all the calories that are listed on that label that you read in the first place. This can also be affected by the way that you prepare the food. So preparing the food in certain ways will actually unlock 
calories that might not have been taken in if the food were uncooked or raw. For example, a potato, when uncooked, might only be 100 calories, but after it is cooked and baked, it unlocks 90 more calories that your body can actually digest and absorb at that point. The next variable, with inside our gut, we actually have bacteria that cause us to absorb nutrients and calories differently as well. So that comes back to, once again, that our absorption will also vary based off of our gut bacteria. Not simply the type of food that we eat, but also what's within us that breaks that food down and helps us absorb the nutrients and calories. And finally on our list for calories in, if you are not measuring and you're simply eyeballing your measurements, the truth is we are pretty terrible at eyeballing those measurements and we usually do more than we think. Simply put, statistics have been shown. So at this point, I hope you can actually see that there's a lot of work being done for the amount of air that there is on both sides of the calculation that you might be using. So whether you're using the simple calculator online that uses an average, or you're using the measurement of I'm taking in calories and what those calories are over time, it is probably giving you at best a very rough estimate. And what we've found is that there can actually be 25% error on the calorie outside and 25% error on the calorie inside. Now, why does this all matter to you? Because if you're trying to lose or gain weight and you're trying to do it by counting calories specifically and only using that method, then you are relying on something that has the potential for up to 50% error when you combine both total energy expended and calories in. The whole balance rests on those numbers and you're basically shooting at a moving target. If you couldn't tell already, I'm not a huge fan of calorie counting for the amount of work being done and the amount of air that there could be on that work being done. It's obvious that you need to put in some study of your own body and adjust appropriately because if I'm a person that eats 2,000 calories a day and that's what I've been told I should eat or that's what I've calculated but I'm not losing any weight, realistically if I were eating those 2,000 calories and at best I was only getting 25% error on that expenditure and the tracking side of calories in, I could actually be eating 2,500 calories. The thing is, I'll never know because it is a moving target and I don't know those specific variables, especially when those variables can change from day to day. All right, so if you're sitting there a bit mind blown and baffled and confused right now, don't worry, I've got you covered. Here are a few things that can get you started. You want to develop your awareness of your hunger signals and really respond to your hunger signals based off of what your goal is. So if you're trying to lose weight, we're going to look at the hunger signals and are they on a specific timeline? Am I only eating because I'm used to that specific timeline? Am I hydrated enough? Hydration can play into our hunger signals quite well. We get about a liter of our water from the foods we eat. So oftentimes when we're dehydrated, our body will send a hunger signal to get us to actually take in some food to take in some water. If you simply take in some water when you have that hunger signal, you might also notice that that hunger signal starts to go away. Looking at things like once I have that hunger signal, if it's not on that time schedule necessarily, I want to be looking at the foods that I'm taking in. Are they going to keep me full? Are they meeting the nutrient needs that my body is requiring? If I'm not meeting my nutrient needs, that might also be triggering my hunger signals. If I'm eating less nutrient dense foods, that's going to make me ask for food a little bit more frequently and take in more calories. Once I have a good awareness of the timing of my meals and when I'm getting hungry and why I'm getting hungry in that way, we want to look at within the meal how quickly I'm eating, 
the amount of food that I am taking in, if I'm eating past satiated, or if I'm eating too satiated, or if I'm leaving a little bit of room, if I'm trying to lose weight, once again, based off your goal. And finally, simply looking at the nutrient content of your food overall, it's going to help you eat less if you're trying to, or eat more if you need to based off of the macro, macronutrient breakdown and what your goal is once again. So if I'm trying to lose weight, I'm going to focus more on those proteins. I'm going to focus more on high fiber foods. If I'm trying to gain weight, I might actually want to look at the type of carbohydrates that I'm taking in and the amount of those carbohydrates specifically. So carbohydrates that are a little bit more starchy versus those that have more of the fibrous content and lowering the protein content slightly but still staying within my needs overall. This can all vary based off of an individual's body type. Those things right there should be helpful in guiding you and giving you some direction with where you want to go. If you guys like this video today, please let me know by clicking that button down below and share it with a friend. You know they need this information as well. Leave me a comment down below also letting me know something you didn't know about total daily energy expenditure or even about the calories in part, whatever it is. But tell me something about this video that was enlightening to you and helpful to you. And lastly, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button. I'm so thankful for those people that already have, but if you're not one of them, I would love to have you with the Stronghold Army today. Lastly, if you guys need a little bit more direction, make sure you take a moment to stop by my website. I'll put that link down below in the description, and you can go ahead and get a free hour with me to get you going and get you started. But if you need something a little bit more specific and tailored and you're ready to go on that online coaching, make sure you fill out that application and we'll have you run in toward your goals in no time. I want to thank you guys for watching today. We'll see you next time.